Hey, welcome to Resolve and Post. My name is Gary, and in this video, we are going to be creating this somewhat abstract reading animation. I'm not really sure what to call it, but um, I saw an After Effects tutorial from Mobox Graphics, and they did this very effect, which I thought looked really cool. And I thought of, hey, why not bring this over to DaVinci Resolve Fusion and recreate it here? So here we are, and let's just get right to it. First things first, let's go ahead and create our Fusion composition by right-clicking anywhere in our media pool and then selecting new fusion composition. We're gonna title this abstract rig. We'll leave the frame rate at 30, but change the duration to, to let's change it to 20. 20 looks good, create. And with our newly created fusion composition, we'll drag this into our timeline and then head right over to our fusion page. So all we want to do first is create the parts that make up the rig. So the parts that we'll be creating is a circle and four lines. I'm just going to move the media out out of our way real quick. I click anywhere in your node editor, press shift space bar on your keyboard. And to build our circle, we will need an ellipse node and a background node. So type in ellipse, enter, and then shift space bar again, type in background. Let's connect these two together. I'm just going to move this here. Um, I'm going to go ahead and rename this real quick to circle and then bring the background node into our viewer. So here is our circle. I'm going to resize this to this big and then select background node so I can change the color to uh, salmon pink. That's good. So here we have our circle. Now we're going to go ahead and create our four lines. And to create the lines, what we'll need is a polygon node connected to a background node. So shift spacebar, type in polygon, shift spacebar again, type in background, and connect these two together. And then I'm going to bring this background into our viewer. I'm going to rename this real quick to line four. <laughs> You're probably wondering why line four, you know, why not line one? So to build this rig, we're going to need to connect the outermost parts first and then work our way in. So that means we're going to connect the circle to line four. Afterwards, we connect line four to line three, line three, line two, line two to line one. And so that's why I'm kind of naming these backwards. With our line node selected, we're going to draw our first line, I zoom in and create two points. Uh, we still don't see our lines yet, and that's because our border width is set to zero. So I'm just going to increase the border width just a bit. I think 0 0.005 is good. And then select the background node to change the color. Um, and I'm going to use different colors for each of the lines just so we can distinguish them from one another and it'll be easier to connect them, which you'll see shortly. So that is our line four. I'm just going to slide this up. And we need to create three more lines. So the easy way to do this would be just to copy and paste. So let's grab both of these notes, press Command C to copy, and then we're going to press Command V three more times to make three more copies of this line. Command V, Command V, Command V. All right. Uh, and then I'm just going to go ahead and rename these. So this one I'll rename to line three. This one rename to line two. And this one, rename to line one. All right. Uh, again, we're, we will be using different colors for each of the lines. So I'm going to select this one, bring it into our viewer, and change this one to blue. So line three is blue. I'll do the same for line two. Uh, make this one purple. And for line one, I'll, I'll make this one white. So just to kind of show you what we have so far. We have white for line one, purple for line two, blue for line three, yellow for line four, and um, pink for our circle. What we want to do next is resize our lines so that you know they're not all the same uh, length because it's just a little bit more interesting when they're all of different length. So let's bring line one back to the viewer. I'll leave line one as is for line two. Select the line two node. To resize, hold down shift just to make sure you maintain the line at um, horizontal orientation. Bring in line three, holding down shift, going to resize this. And then line four, we'll make this one the smallest like that. All right, so 
line one, two, three, four, and our circle. Oop. <laughs> I think four is a bit too small. Let me just make this bigger. But I'll make line one a little smaller because I'm afraid that after connecting all four lines together, it's going to exceed the height of our canvas here. Okay, good. So as I've mentioned earlier, what we're going to do first is connect the most outer parts together. So that means we're going to first connect the circle to line four. So from the um, output node of this background that's connected to the circle, we're going to link this to the output node of this background node connected to line four. That'll create a merge node. I'm going to go ahead and drag this into our viewer. And what we're going to do now is connect the circle to the right side of the line. But coincidentally, I think it's really spot on to where we want it. But just to be sure, we're going to bring down the blend value here. Okay, so you see it's not spot on. So we're going to need to shift the circle a bit to the right so that it's connected to the right end of the line. And to do that, while the merge node is still selected, we're going to increase the X value here like so. I probably have to bring down the Y value just a tad as well. So let's bring the Y value down a bit, something like this. I think it looks good. And then I'm going to bring the blend back up. Zoom out. And now what we want to do is while the merge node is still selected, press shift space bar on your keyboard, type in transform or XF for short. Bring this into our viewer. And what we want to do with the transform node is adjust the anchor point so that the anchor point is on the left edge of our line. So to do that, while transform node is selected, go over to the inspector panel and adjust the pivot values for X and Y. So we want this to be around here is good. And then we're going to repeat this very process three more times so we can connect to line three, line two and line one. So from the output of this transform node, we're going to drag this to the output of this background node that's connected to line three. It'll create this merge node. Let's bring this into our viewer. All right, um, we don't see anything. That's because line three is actually hidden beneath line four and this circle. Uh, so what we can do is uh, bring down the blend so we can see. And then now we're going to adjust the X value here because we want to connect this to the right end of our line three. Bring up our blend again. And then afterwards, we're going to create a transform node so we can reposition the anchor point to the left end of this line, like over here. Okay. Great, right, let's repeat this process two more times. So click and drag the output of this transform node to the output of this background node that's connected to line two. Bring this into our viewer. Again, our line is hidden beneath this, which is why we color coded our line so we can distinguish them from one another. So I'm just gonna bring this blend um, halfway down and I'm going to slide this to the right because we wanna connect this to the right end of line two. So over here is about right bring the blend back up and then add another transform node so we can adjust the anchor point. Go to the inspector panel, shift the pivot over here. There. All right, repeat the process once more. We're gonna drag the output of this node into the output of this node. Bring this merge node into our viewer bring down the blend just a little bit. And then we're going to slide this to the right so we can connect this to the right end of our line one about here. And then once more, we're going to add a, let's bring the blend back up and then add one more transform note so we can adjust the anchor point. Let's bring this into our viewer, um, adjust the pivot values until we get right over here is, this is about right. So this is what we have so far. Let's go ahead and have a look. Uh, you see, if we rotate this at a 90 degree angle, you'll see that it's clipping. <laughs> so let's go ahead and uh, adjust the size to about here. 
And before we move on to the next step, I want to also adjust the center values here so that our rig is position centered to this, uh, to the canvas here. Okay, so now what we're going to do next is use some expressions to animate our angles. With this transform node selected, head over to our inspector panel and under angle, double click the input field here and then let's type in the following expression equals time times number. The higher num the number, the faster the rotation. So I'm just going to use a relatively low number here, use number two. And let's play this back, see how it looks. So right now it's currently spinning this direction. If we made this uh, a negative number, it'll spin at the opposite direction. So I'm gonna change this back to positive two. All right. And then I'm going to do the same for the remaining lines. So uh, let's go ahead and click on this transform node here. Go to the inspector panel and then double click in this input field for angle and then type in the following expression equals time times and this this time i'll make it go the opposite direction of line one so i'm going to use a negative number this time times negative four let's play this back see how it looks okay we'll do this two more times so for this transform node for line three Go to the inspector panel, double click in this input field for the angle value and type in the following expression, time times um, negative three. And lastly, for this one, this time I'll make it go the other direction uh, equals time times um, eight. All right, let's see how this looks. All right, not bad. And we can play around with the numbers later. So for example, if you think eight is going too slow, then we can increase it to uh, say 12 and play this back, see how it looks. So for now, let's just leave it as is. And we are pretty much done with the first half. Now for the second half of this tutorial, what we want to do is first copy and paste everything that we've created so far. So command C to copy, click elsewhere on your node editor, press command V. Let's just drag this right underneath it just to stay organized. And we're going to be using dual screens this time. So click on this icon over here. And for the original, I'm going to drag this to the left viewer for the copy. I'm going to drag this to the right viewer. And what we want to achieve with the copy is we want to isolate the circle so that the lines are no longer there because shortly after we are going to apply some effects that we only want to be applied to the circle and to do that the simplest way is just to make these lines uh, go invisible so click on the background nodes of each line and then in the inspector panel what we want to do is just bring down the values of the red channel, green channel, blue channel, and alpha channel. So if you notice here, we're working with line one, which is the white line. If I bring the red channel down, green channel, blue channel, alpha channel down, our line is no longer visible. So we're going to repeat the same process for the background nodes of line two, three, and four. One more. So now let me just zoom to fit on both of these. If we play this back, you'll see that the circle here is moving at the same motion, same rate, same speed, same everything as the one to our left, but without the lines. And that's exactly what we were looking for. All right. So um, we no longer need dual viewers. So I'll click on this icon over here to have single viewer for for the circle only and then with this transform node selected I want to add a duplicate node so shift spacebar type in duplicate enter let's bring this into our viewer um, if we play this back you'll notice that you know nothing's changed what we want to do is create a duplicate that has uh, 20 copies use a time offset of 
negative 0.2. And then next, what we'll do is create a trails node. And let's bring this into our viewer. Uh, and let me just play this back at its default settings. So what the trails node does, as the name suggests, it creates a trail. But under the default settings, the length and the duration of the trail is indefinite. And that's not what we want, right? We want our trail to slowly disappear. And in order to do that, what we want to do is adjust the gain. So that means if we use a gain of like 0.6, and if we play this back, you'll see that there is still a trail, but the trail is much shorter than what it was before. The number that we want to use in this case is 0.97. And I know this from trial and error, you know, this is not the first time I've created this uh, very effect. And so if we play this through, you'll see that this is, you know, pretty much what we're looking for. Um, if you want it to be a little longer then you know, 0.98 or 99 would also do well. Also, one thing to note before we move on to creating the next node, when working with trails, you see if I move back to, right now I'm currently at frame 323. If I jump back to frame um, 120, the trails don't go away. In fact, they accumulate. So if I were to again jump to frame 220, 220 and play from here, you see that they, they accumulate. So one thing to know when you're working with the trails node is that you will, you will need to constantly press the uh, this restart button here to kind of start a, a clean plate. All right, so play this back and see what we have. Okay, very good. So bring this down back to frame zero. Uh, don't forget to restart your trails. And what we want to do next is add in a glow node. And this will just kind of spice things up. Bring this into our viewer. I'll increase the glow just a bit, increase the size. Um, and for the apply node, I'm going to bring down the threshold so that there's a lot more things glowing. <laughs> I don't know if that's the best way to explain it. But yeah, I, I like what I see so far. And so now the last thing we need to do is just connect our nodes together. Let me just bring up dual viewer once more. We're going to connect this that we've just created with the isolated circle and the effects to the original rig that we created in this video. And so to do that, we have to grab the output from this glow node and connect it to the output from this transform node. And um, if we bring this to our viewer, and then let's change it back to single viewer. Uh, again, this looks messed up because we have to reset our trails here. Select the trails node, click restart, and voila, clean plate. Now let's play this back, see how it looks. Nice, very nice. And, you know, that's pretty much it. We, all we have to do is just connect the output node from this merge node into the media out node. Again, there are so many things that we can adjust here. For example, you can adjust the color of the circle so that the color changes over time. And to do that, go to frame zero. Uh, let's say we start with red, keyframe it, go to frame 50 change the color to say green, go to frame 100, change it to blue, uh, you know, and, and, and so forth. You can get really creative with this. Um, and you can even also get creative with the size of the circle so that it changes over time. Uh, and if you wanted to do that, then again, start at frame zero. This time, activate your circle node. And over here, let's zoom in just a bit. Starting at frame zero, Let's keyframe our width and our height and go to say frame 100 and then increase the diameter like so, uh, 260. Let's decrease the diameter, 400. You know, it's really just entirely up to you. I'm not sure how this is gonna look, but I'm just trying to demonstrate that adding these little tweaks into your composition here will really change the way it looks. So let's have a look. 
don't forget to reset trails play this back um, and to top it off you know you can even add a background node so let's just do that right now click anywhere in your node editor type in background uh, let's bring this into the viewer first and for this I'm gonna use dark gray and I'm going to pipe this into this merge node uh, let's bring this merge node into our viewer right now we don't see anything that's because this background here is acting as the foreground and this is indicated by the color of our connectors here green means foreground yellow means background and we we want this background to be in the background so we're going to need to select this merge node and then press command t on your keyboard or control t if you're on windows to switch the foreground with the background vice versa like so okay reset the trails node play this once more and see what we have and yeah that's all there is to it so i hope you found this helpful if so please do like and subscribe to the channel um again thank you so much for watching and i do hope to see you again on the next one